Baptist Church, and thank you for being a part of our television ministry. Pulaski Heights is a place of warmth and love with an outreach mission that extends far beyond our church walls. We have a long tradition of offering our hearts, stretching our minds, and extending Christ's hands to those in need. We are a congregation of hope and an open place of worship that seeks to share the good news beyond the conventional barriers of fellowship. Hi, I'm Brent Scott, a senior pastor at Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church. It is our desire that you will be inspired by today's message of hope for diverse community in search of God's love.
Almighty God, you rule the peoples of the earth. Inspire the minds of all to you who have given the responsibility of government and leadership. Give to the people of our country zeal for justice and strength, for, strength of forbearance, that we may use our liberty in accordance with your gracious will. Forgive our shortcomings as a nation. Purify our hearts to see and love the truth. In the name of God, let us show signs of love and peace. may be seated. I want to invite uh, Mr. Kerry Smith, Staff Parish Relations Committee Chair, forward, along with Reverend Belinda Price, as we celebrate the, uh, Belinda's appointment to Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church. Dear friends, today we welcome Reverend Belinda Price, who has been appointed to serve as our associate pastor. We believe she is well qualified and has been prayerfully appointed by our bishop, Bishop Gary Muller. Belinda, you have been sent to live among us as a bearer of the word of God, a minister of the sacraments, and a sustainer of the love, order, and discipleship of the people of God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, will you who celebrate this new beginning support and uphold Reverend Price in these ministries? We reaffirm our commitment to support you with our prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. Reverend Price, accept this Bible and be among us as one who proclaims the word. Reverend Price, use this hymnal and book of worship to guide us in our prayer and praise. Reverend Price, take this water and baptize new Christians in this place. Reverend Price, receive this globe and lead us in our mission to this community and all the world. Reverend Price, Take the bread and cup and keep us in communion with Christ and his church. Reverend Price, receive this book of discipline and help us keep the covenant that strengthens our connections as United Methodists. Reverend Price, receive this stole signifying your ordination and shepherd us as our pastor. Let us pray. Eternal God, strengthen and sustain us in our ministries together with Reverend Price as our pastor. Give her and us patience, courage, and wisdom so that together we may follow Jesus Christ, living together in love and offering our gifts and talents in your service. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
I invite the children to come forward and join me at the chancel for the time for young Christians as we sing together. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Are you good? You doing well? Listen, when I left my house this morning and I walked out the front door, I thought I'd just like to bring something with me, so I brought this. This is a, this is a doormat, isn't it? What do we use these for? To wipe our feet on? Right, that's exactly right. We, we clean our feet off before we walk into a house, but this doormat is special. I don't even call it a doormat. I call it the welcome mat because it says welcome. And so my family and I want everyone who comes to our house to know that they are welcome, friends and neighbors and even strangers. They're welcome to come in and be a part of our family at least for a time. And so it's really important. It's important to welcome people and to uh, welcome new friends in the neighborhood. We're going through a lot of welcoming today here at Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church. We've got not only one new pastor, but two new pastors, Reverend Jacob Lynn and Reverend Belinda Price. And Reverend Price is sitting right there, right now. Would you look at her? She's waving to you. I think she looks okay, don't you? I think we should welcome her. So would you, um, would you join with me in saying, welcome Reverend Price, one, two, three, loud. Welcome Reverend Price. Let's let the congregation do that as well. One, two, three. Welcome, Reverend Price. You know, when you welcome people, you're being like Jesus because Jesus welcomed everyone. In fact, Jesus welcomed people that other people didn't like at all. Jesus just loved everyone. He loved everyone. In a couple of weeks, you're going to start Vacation Bible School, and that's what it's all about. It's about welcoming strangers. In fact, next week, we start a new sermon series called Radical Hospitality. There's even a door. My welcome mat is right there. But this is a whole sermon series. Like there's five sermons and they're all about welcoming God's people and different stories in the Bible. But I've got a surprise. You know that these stories are the ones you're learning in VBS. So if your parents want to know what you're doing in VBS, they can come to each of these sermons and get an idea of what we're all about at the church, okay? So will you out and welcome someone today? Would you do me a favor? Tell your families to take one of these from the pew because they're located at each end and pass those down. Take at least one, maybe two or three, and give it to a friend or neighbor and welcome them to join us here at Pulaski Heights, okay? Great. All right, will you pray with me? Dear God, we thank you for the welcome you have given us in Jesus Christ, for his love that embraces all of us wherever we are. May we continue to be a welcoming community of faith in our outreach to your people in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. See you later. this time we invite our families to come forward for the sacrament of Christian baptism. Both of our families should come forward. Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Reverend Scarter and members of Plansky Heights United Methodist Church, I present Whitman Atler Holesclaw and Preston Avery Holesclaw and Harry Holden Lott for the sacrament of baptism. 
And now, Abby and Jason, and Haley and Harry, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? <laughs> if so, please say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, please say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, please say, I do. Will you nurture these children in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example they may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves, to profess their faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? If so, please say, I will. And members of Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church, will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? If so, please say, we will. Okay, <coughs> Whitman, Preston, and Holden, we're going to take a walk. Whitman, you have so much energy. You want to walk with me? You want to hold my hand and take a walk? Huh? <laughs> Look, I'm taking, I'm taking your little baby sister, so you want to come with me or have your dad walk with you? Okay, let's do this thing. We have got, it's all good, it's all good. We are blessed today at Pulaski Heights to uh, welcome these three beautiful young spirits into our congregation. Um, Whitman, Preston, and Holden. Guys and girl, these are, this is your Christian family. They are here today to celebrate your baptism. They've already promised to help raise you up in the faith to be children of God until you reach that age and you claim that baptism for yourself. Aren't they all wonderful? These are good-looking kids. They are, absolutely. Let's walk back this way, okay? You're enjoying this, aren't you? This is a great congregation, and they will love you and love you and watch over you as you grow into the faith, always, okay? All right. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on this gift of water upon these children and wash away their sin and clothe them in your righteousness. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey, Whitman, I want to show you something. You want to touch this water? It's pretty cool, huh? Whitman Adler. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit work within you that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Your, your big brother has led the way. You ready? Preston Avery, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit work within you that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Last but certainly not least. You ready, Harry? Harry Holden. What a handsome guy. Harry Holden, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit work within you that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. 
And now let us welcome the newly baptized as printed in your bulletin. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you into Christ's holy church, for we are all one in Christ Jesus our Lord. We promise to love, encourage, nurture, and support you, and to help you know and follow Christ. be with you. Let us pray. God of all creation, today we come seeking you with the full knowledge that you are ready to respond to our supplications. We invite you into our minds and hearts in this quiet moment of praise and thanksgiving. Help us to set aside any distractions that would keep us from resting in your presence. Hear our prayers for grieving families. Richard and Sheila Boffman, and family in the death of his father, Jerry Broffman, and his brother, Bob Broffman, and the friends of Virginia Clogdale in her recent death. We also pray for persons hospitalized recently, Jane Broughtnax, Mallory Crank, Nick Fiskin, Paul Foster, Dana Fuller, Ruth Girard, Tony Halford, Ellie Horton, Steve James, Justin Jeffers, Cecil Malone, Maud Montgomery, Bob Smith, Joe Smith, and Dee Tucker. And we pray your blessings upon couples uh, who were recently married, Stephanie Email and Dr. Hal Lickney in their recent marriage, Audrey Stevens and Tyler Cobb in their recent marriage, Mary Margaret Faulkner and Aaron Morrissey in their marriage, Caitlin Jackson and Nicholas Taylor in their recent marriage, and Annie Burns and Adam Childers in their marriage. We also rejoice in the birth of Thomas Clark Tennyson, child of Katie and Clark Tennyson and grandchild of Louise and Joe Fox. And we rejoice in the birth of Kenley East Mitchell, daughter of Jessica and Clint Mitchell, granddaughter of Tom and Mary Carolyn East and great grandchild of Dot East. Gracious God, hear our prayers for our newly assigned pastors, Reverend Belinda Price and Reverend Jacob Lynn. Open our ears to hear what you have to say to us. Open our hearts to feel your inspiration and guidance. And bless all who need your tender touch today. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You are invited to stand for the reading of the scripture, 
which is 1 Corinthians 1, 4 through 9 in the New Testament. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him in speech and knowledge of every kind. Just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Would you pray with me, please? O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Oh my. Here we are together again. And it feels absolutely right but it feels just a little strange. It feels strange because I've already been a part of this congregation for most of my adult life. But as a member sitting in the pews, not as your pastor, and from the pew I had a different perspective. For six years I was the, youth, the director of children's ministry here during that time, I coordinated confirmation and, and children's Sunday school and vacation Bible school and all sorts of other activities. I directed the nursery with the help of many wonderful paid staff and volunteers and helped grow the daycare center. It was my first experience as a professional church leader and I loved that work. I sat in the pews with you, but through that position on staff here, I occasionally helped in worship. It was out of those experiences as well as a taste of seminary through the Christian education certification that I earned through Perkins School of Theology that a call to ordained ministry began to form. It was from this church that I was affirmed in that call and launched on the journey to seminary. But my perspective from the pew goes much deeper than that. Before uh, leaving for seminary, I'd been a member of this church for 20 years. I met my husband, Phil, here at this church and we were married in this sanctuary. Our children, Matt and Elizabeth, were baptized and confirmed here. As parents, you know we always want what's best for our children. Parenting is a great undertaking, if not challenging. And through this church, our children grew to be compassionate caring young adults, eager to make their own contributions to the world. Phil and I are so thankful for a church that so willingly helped us raise them. Here, they were surrounded by adults that cared for them and taught them and guided them. Here, they were the beneficiaries of programs that were so willingly given financial support by you. Here they sang in children's choirs and youth choirs, performed in wonderful plays and musicals based on biblical stories, participated in mission trips and mission activities, and most importantly, learned about the love of God. And that love of God is in their hearts. This is my very proud pew perspective. 
But my pew perspective goes even beyond that. I came to this church as a young single woman with my cousin Beverly. I was just out of college, working my first year as a kindergarten teacher. And although this was the biggest church I had ever seen, it was in this church I found an immediate sense of belonging. I had always been a part of a church growing up, been a part of a church family. My parents and grandparents were all active in the same church. It was central to our lives. I grew up with a sense of Methodist heritage at Salem United Methodist Church where every summer, every summer, camp meeting was held. But now, now I had found my own church, my own church, a place where there were other single young adults to journey with. It was a grand time. And most of those young adults are still here, still here in this congregation, sitting in the pews and working in so many ways to make this church and our conference and our denomination what it is today and better. Out of that group of young people, at least three Sunday schools were, were created and a, a, a young adult choir as well as a United Methodist women's group. From the pews of this church, we heard great preaching, great preaching, and we participated in magnificent worship and heard heavenly music and fervent prayers. We were privileged to hear the great minds and preachers of Christendom through the Rainy Lectures, now called the Rainy Preaching Series. As an aside, when I went to seminary and started reading, there they were. There they were. All those great voices that I had heard right here from, the, from my pew at Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church. There was John Killinger, who through his life experiences shared how his theology changed. Fred Craddock, one of the best preachers and storytellers of the last 50 years. The great biblical scholar Walter Brueggemann, who helps us understand the Bible in fresh ways and moves us towards social justice. Leonard Sweet and recently Brian McLaren, who keep us focused on the future and remind us and help us understand how culture impacts the church. And Trevor Hudson. Trevor Hudson, who so moved our hearts not one year, but two. It was one such preacher and rainy lecturer, Bruce Larson, who set me thinking seriously about my Christian life years ago. As we studied his book in Sunday school, I heard these words. If you let God have your life. God will make your life more than you can imagine. Let God be in control of your life. Well, at that time I was newly married and I liked my life pretty well. I was certainly a believer, but those words frightened me. And all I could think was that if I agree, if I gave my life completely to God, then, then I would have to leave the life that I knew and go to Africa or South America or China 
to be a missionary. You see, at that early age, I had no concept of the other ways to answer God's call, and I wasn't ready to relinquish control. It was some time after that that Reverend Beverly Sawyer came to be one of our pastors. A woman pastor. She was the first one I knew. She prayed beautiful, poetic prayers that expressed our true needs in such meaningful ways. Her prayers added to the richness of worship and to my understanding of God. Women pastors have suffered a great deal blazing the trail for those of us who come behind them. For them, I am so grateful. Much was gained through sitting in these pews together with you. And in Sunday school and in United Methodist Women gatherings, we leaned on one another for support in our daily lives. In Sunday school, we huddled together and tried to understand when our friends lost not one, but two tiny infants. We studied the will of God and the road less traveled and why bad things happen to good people trying to understand exactly how life worked and how we were to live as Christians in life's midst. Together in these pews and in small groups, we prayed and studied, and together we grew each other up. In all this rich, rich experience, I struggled with God, trying to understand God's will for my life, still feeling some pull that began those years ago reading Ruth Larson. And once again, God used this church to help me discern my call. In 1995, I walked through the East Breezeway doors to volunteer my time for a program that needed some help. When I walked through those doors I had walked through a thousand times before, this time something was different. I was overcome with the sensation and I stopped in my tracks and I heard in my spirit this is where you're supposed to be. And it was. And for the first time in my life, I felt a deep, deep peace. After several years of working here in this congregation, I felt an urgent need to go to seminary, not really knowing exactly where that would lead. It was during my time there in seminary that the call to be a pastor became clear. I have found, you see, that if I try to follow God's leading, my life does become more than I can ever imagine. God is full of surprises. So I come today, having just completed seven years as pastor of Bologna United Methodist Church. There we grew out of our small sanctuary. We expanded both in numbers and in faith. We experienced a tornado that ripped through our town, leaving so much devastation in its wake. You sent teams of volunteers to help us. We worked with other churches in Bologna to provide funds and assistance for recovery. That recovery lasted a full two years. 
in Valonia a few weeks ago before I left, the youngest of the children there took their plastic shovels and broke ground on a building addition that will house children's ministry. How blessed I was to be in ministry with those wonderful folks of God, people of God. And now God has surprised me again and I have been appointed here to be one of your pastors. To be here in this church, I have loved so much. As a pastor, each of us is called to proclaim the word of God, to administer the sacraments, to serve God and provide leadership, to equip you to serve God, and to order the life of the church for faithful and fruitful ministry. My special areas of ministry will be welcoming and evangelism. That's my charge. I have the keys, and my office is almost ready. But I can't wait to get started. I'm thrilled to be here with Brett and Jeff and Lynn Lindsay, Jacob Lynn, Bishop Hicks, and Jay Clark. And I look forward to being in ministry with you. So as I begin this new relationship with you, as your pastor, I would like to echo Paul's words to the Corinthians, and I paraphrase. I give thanks to my God for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus, and for every way you have been enriched in him and able to serve him to touch people like me. God is faithful. I take my being here with you today as a sign of that. And I know that God will strengthen us all to continue in ministry and build upon the legacy of all who have gone before us. In short, here it is in one sentence, a summary of Paul's words and what I want to say to you today. I thank God for what he has done through you and for what God will continue to do through us together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning, I have one addition to our joys and concerns. Uh, we extend our Christian sympathy to Richard Nall, Dr. Richard Nall and family, and the death of his partner, Frank Gaither, 
A service for Frank Gaither will be held here at Plaska Heights United Methodist Church on Tuesday, July the 2nd at 11 a.m. here in the sanctuary. As the ushers come forward to receive our offering, I would like to remind our members and guests to please uh, detach your connect card from your bulletin and fill it out. It lets us know that you're here today and you can also sign up for the many opportunities uh, that are listed on the connect card. Let us pray. Uh, gracious God, we thank you for every opportunity to present our tithes and our offerings. Uh, bless our giving as we reach out locally and around the world. In Jesus' name, amen.
shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all things we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. We are sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. do not have a church home in Little Rock, we invite you to join Flaska Heights United Methodist Church. Our next membership class will be held July the 14th from 12 to 2 p.m. We invite you to come and start that process if you would like as we sing our final hymn. Let us all sing together. Oh. Okay. 
At the conclusion of our worship service today, Jim Mace will, will be our staff host. Reverend Scarter uh, will be bringing Reverend Lynn down to the Great Hall. All of you are invited to the Great Hall immediately following this service for a reception for Reverend Price and uh, Reverend Jacob Lynn. Uh, Reverend Price will exit out the back door, so we hope that everybody will come down and meet both of our two new pastors. Also, communion will be served in Shamblin Chapel. Sorry. No, that's good. <laughs> Would you join me in the benediction as we read together? Oh God, keep our whole country under your protection. Wipe out sin. Thank you for joining us today at Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church. And I hope you enjoyed our worship service. May the peace, joy, and love of God be with you.